the next question we want to ask is whether after all this increase in price, whether Bitcoin has entered the overvaluation stage or not, right? So this is what we're going to what we're going to spend some time um, going over some of the models that we've been developing and discussing previously. All those models have been kind of pointing to the fact that Bitcoin is severely undervalued and has a, a lot to uh, a lot to gain. And some of that gain has happened. But uh, does that change our analysis at all? So what I want to talk about is like, first of all, um, uh, you know that we are a fan of the power law model because it just statistically works better. And actually, I should say it just works. Other models do not, and they're typically overfit uh, games. Now, we still see that if we run an OLS regression uh, with the power law, the, the, this um, white dashed line will is still above where we are. But what ex how exactly is that? Uh, the power law average value will tell us at this point in the cycle um uh the average value is at 79,000 the current value is at 70 is it 72 yeah but i have on the chart is uh, kind of the latest uh, close that i've been able to collect um this is probably last night or something so it, it puts it at 70 but at 72 we are kind of uh, still below the the average, but we're getting there, right? We've been saying that like here as well. Uh, the gap was increasing, and we were constantly warning people that if the gap between the you know kind of a fair value or average value and the current market value increases, there, there's going to be a higher chance that it will uh, bounce back up in a very rapid fashion, and, and that's happening. And uh, uh, and we were still below what the model would suggest for the average. And one of the ways you can kind of quantify this a, a little bit better is through volatility adjusted power law index that I've created. And this basically looks at, again, uses the last night's close. So today we've had crazy price action, of course. So up, up, up to last night, VPLI index was at 44. Today with the price action, maybe it's at 46, 47. But it's just still below 50. And on this metric, 50 indicates um, neutral valuation. Like when we exactly get to the power law value, uh, our index gets to 50. So we are still in the undervalued zone, by, but it's getting very close. So that's why uh, it's labeled as neutral valuation. If you remember previously, we were in the cool zone. We were cool. Now we're getting closer to neutral. Uh, but this is all expected. We have to go through the neutral and then begin entering the hot zone and the bubble zone. That doesn't mean you will sell, right? Um, you, that doesn't mean you're expecting a downturn or anything. This is a part of the natural um, natural progression of the Bitcoin cycle. Unless we get into like super high levels, like above 80 or something, I wouldn't even worry about yeah just because we say yeah just to be extremely clear for people following week to week um with the show just because we say bitcoin's overvalued on any of these models does not mean we are well first of all we don't give any financial advice whatsoever on the show right it's all just uh education but um uh just because we say you know bitcoin's overvalued on a model does not mean we think that it's a good time to be selling your Bitcoin, right? It's, it's you know, we can be overvalued uh, to a large extent. That's the way these models work. We go extremely undervalued throughout parts of the cycle, and then we get to extremely overvalued throughout parts of the cycle. So overvalued does not mean sell. That's, that's just to be extremely clear. Exactly. So we actually do expect a long period of overvaluation, like the last cycle here, here, here. And then when it reach, reaches the unsustainable level, that's where you get worried. And again, at this point, I've, I've been clear previously, you can change your strategy, but you can also just write it out if you are a HODL or type. It, but it's good to know, you know, at this point, the risk is going to be very high. Now, uh, Plan C has made this uh, beautiful model of power law probability model uh, that uses the quantas, right? So, uh, what should we learn? What do we learn from this one? It kind of adds adds to the previous chart. Yeah, it's just a different way, like we've talked about. It's a different lens of looking at fair value through, right? Because this is looking at the median, whereas the, the last one was the average. So this one is is specifically 50%. That that uh, gray uh, dashed line 
uh, that is the fair. I, we call that the fair value on this model. Sorry about the uh, the table. The, the the things got shifted over, so just ignore the the table's a bit wonky. But the most important thing I just want to share was the data. So um, on this model, you know, it has it's pretty up to date. So it has uh, the price at seventy two thousand two hundred ninety uh, for the that's what it's based on. So we're a little higher than that now, uh, but it's pretty close. Um, and then the fair value right now on this model is is uh, basically sixty nine thousand, right? Just below sixty nine thousand. So this model shows us at a, at the fifty two point four four quantile. We're probably a little higher, so maybe around fifty three quantile or something like that. Um, so what that means is fifty three percent of the data points are below the the. Um, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, fifty three percent of the data points are below, and forty seven percent of the data points are above. Our, our current price, right? That, that's, uh, I guess, a way to say it. Um, and uh, But with the fair value, it's 50% of the data points are below and 50% of the data points are above. So that's how you determine that 50th quantile is basically 50% above, 50% below. That's a 69K. So this, this one's a little bit lower as far as the fair value. Um, it doesn't really wait. It weights things. Um, sim, uh, weights all the. It weights all the data points a little bit more uh, similar. So it the the kind of the extremes of the peaks don't pull up the uh, fair value as much as the last one we we discussed. But yeah, essentially it shows a set of about five percent overvalued, um, and uh, we're at the fifty two point uh, say fifty three quantile five percent overvalued. So that's the takeaways on this model. But again, five percent is nothing. You know, we'll we will be way more overvalued uh, in the coming coming year. So it's it's just a bit overvalued on this model. But now, what about the rest of these? These are today's today's range of the channel, right? Yeah, exactly. So this is showing uh, as of today. Like this does kind of slowly go up over time um, throughout the cycle. So the, the model will increase. But as of right now, if the price was in the range of one ninety to two forty six, so like if today. If we were sitting at 190 to 246, you'd be in that top band, that red band. So that's the 97 to 99.9. So what that means is only 3% of the data points are basically in that range. Like we've only been there 3% of the time. So if you're in a if you're in a, a band and you've only been there 3% of the time throughout the history of Bitcoin, uh, relatively speaking, you should be kind of concerned because the like we talked about, you know, there's a higher risk of going back, reverting back to the mean is what they call it, or the median in this case, right? So you're reverting back to the median. So there's a, it's like an elastic band. The further you get away, the more probability there is to, it's all probability based, right? So the more probability there is to kind of come back down to earth. So that's that top, uh, the top um, red band. And then we're below that, we have the uh, the orange one. And so we're not uh, 100% sure, of course, that we're going to get to the red band this cycle. We've kind of discussed the possibility of, you know, maybe we don't get there. But I think there's a really good chance, really high probability, we at least make it to the orange. And so that orange is sitting out right now, 145 to 190 uh, ish. And that's the 90 to 97 quantile. So that's basically saying we've only been there 10% of the time, or, or like, yeah, the top 10% of the data set. So yeah, anything above 145 as of today would put us in kind of like a, somewhat of a risky territory to revert to the mean or the median. And um, and then the bottom band. The bottom band is interesting because <clears throat> that's kind of your downside risk on this model. Um, of course, you know, there's always a probability of going lower, but this bottom band is held really strong um, throughout the history of Bitcoin. We're pretty confident in that band. We actually think it's connected. Uh, uh, that's another chart we can discuss uh, next week, maybe. But we're still speculating and still trying to determine, but we do think there's somewhat there could potentially be a relationship between that blue band and the and the actual production cost of Bitcoin. Uh, there's, it's quite interesting when you look at the um, the actual uh, cost of producing a Bitcoin tends to kind of be in that range of that blue band. But uh, so there could be something more there that actually supports the price because usually commodities, which Bitcoin is a digital commodity, typically speaking, they don't really trade below their production cost. So that's uh, something interesting to note. But right now that's sitting at, you know, 35 to 42 K. Um, that's the bottom 5% of the data set. So we're only below that. Um, we're only in that, that blue. If you're in that blue band, you're in, you're kind of, uh, it's only 5% of the time where that uh, undervalued, right? Is a way to say it. So that's pretty much the overview on this one. Um, yeah. What are the valuation in 2025? Okay. So I actually did look at this one i can quickly so while we that last week didn't we yeah we showed that last week kind of like what it looks exactly. like at the end of next the end of last wasn't it the top one percent is two hundred eighty-five thousand? 
Yeah, let me just read these to you. By the end of 2025, so by the end of 2025, uh, this this channel would go from 55k to 285. So the number that Plan C was showing today is kind of around two 200,000 for the max and 40,000 for the minimum. Right, that's going to grow to 285 and 55. And uh, yeah, so that that's how it grows. But uh, maybe since I showed this, we can also talk about you know, this way of looking at it, right? If I break down the probability in three pieces, and this is where we are right now, and we are kind of in the middle zone, right? But that's what actually, you know, slightly overvalued, possibly if you look at the median, slightly undervalued if you look at the average. But nevertheless, we're still in this kind of transition phase. So the way I look at this is we are warming up, right? We are definitely out of the blue zone. Um, uh, so the bear market is definitely over and we're just warming up to, to get to the, uh, explosive price action in the red zone. Right. So, but, but at the end of 2025, this is what you're looking at. As soon as we passed 136, uh, here we are kind of above this quantile 66 and, and entering the bubble territory. And, uh, this model will basically say, the, the top of that bubble uh, by 2025 should be around this number. And of course, this is all probabilities, right? It can go higher, it can go lower, but the model says the 99th quantile will be at that level. So, um, and if you look at the prior uh, cycles, uh, we kind of do that as well. We have, we have these super low um, cool periods, like extreme um, low valuation in bear markets are also here. Uh, but then we have we go through this transition phase. We try tried once here, didn't work out. COVID happened, and then we tried again. Spent some time in the transition period, and once you're out of the transition period, the bull markets. The main thing that kind of people know as the bull market, the main exciting price action begins, and then. But that's just the beginning, right? So it doesn't mean again you get worried or anything. You just wait it out, and, and the price goes up, goes up, and then. But the quantile model will be able to exactly give you the percentage, the quantile, where we're at. And typically in most prior cycles, once we've been getting closer to 99th, and I would say just above 90, 90th percentile, the peak is very near, like you see here, here. So here we probably got to 90, 98%, here past 99, here past 99. And, and this one um, is slightly, you know, uh, kind of the same number, I would say. Uh, and then, um, uh, yeah, so so the quantification is very helpful in telling you how where we are in the kind of the channel that this model would suggest. Yeah, the red, the red is kind of like the full bull, right? That's like the full bull market. That's when things start to go a little bit parabolic and they're a little bit less, like things become less sustainable. Um, and then, uh, yeah, with those previous peaks, like we got to 99.9, 99.9 uh, for for 2013, 2017, we got to 99.9. And then last cycle, we got to 99.5. Now, it's only a half a, diff, a half a percentage difference on the quantiles, but it's actually quite a bit different um, in in uh, in dollar terms. But we spent quite a bit. Of, we talked about this last week. We spent a lot, a lot more time, though, even though the um, the amplitude uh, wasn't as high, uh, we spent more uh, duration there. So it equals about the same peak. We kind of discussed that last week, how even though um, the last cycle we didn't quite get as high on the quantile, we, we spent a longer period there. So it, it's essentially was the same the same kind of extreme period, right? So, um, but yeah, no, I, I like this model. I like the way you broke it down into three. It's really it makes it really simple to follow. We have kind of like the blues that is the bear market. Um, you know, that's that's the accumulation. That's like the heavy accumulation period. That's when you really want to be buying is in that blue zone. That's when you want to be loading up and DCing as heavy as possible. That's the, the if you can buy as much Bitcoin as possible during the blue, that's really the the um, you set yourself up for success throughout the cycle. And then the, that green is still a decent place to be buying, um, especially the lower end of the green. So <clears throat> but then, yeah, once you get in the red, maybe you want to lighten up on the DCA if you're a, a longer term holder, um, because uh, once you're in the red zone, there's a, a decent probability will at some point go back below 
kind of that bottom of the red zone, right? Like in, in, the way I would look at it, we don't know for sure, of course, it's all probabilities. But uh, once you're in the red, you know, it is possible that when the bear market comes, uh, we do end up kind of trading below that that red period. Um, so it gives you, yeah. So that's that's another discussion for another day, though. Um, yeah. What else did you want to add on this one, Cena? Uh, this gives a good overview of kind of. Uh, yeah, just and, just, and this uh, is, this, just a oh, heads up. Oh, you're back. Awesome. Yes. What happened? Oh yeah. One one uh, you were you were actually speaking, but I was going to say one thing with that last chart. Um, if you pull it back up, um, and we can move on to the rest of the charts we have. But it really depends on when we peak. That's the other thing, right? You got like the timing factor, right? So. Um, the model you were showing with the uh, 285 is the top 1%. That's only at the end of next year, right? So, like, there is a probability, of course, we can peak middle of next year, right? We can also peak in middle of 2026. Um, I, I like to be, a, I think both of us are this way, but I like to be a, a, as uh, agnostic as possible when it comes to the, the price or when it comes to the, uh, the timing of things. Because like, we really don't know. Yes, we've had this four-year cycle, and yes, we typically have peaked in December or November, towards the end of the year. But um, that doesn't mean that's going to be the case again. So we, we want to kind of be open minded on when we'll actually peak and just let the data determine, like, like follow what the data says, right? We're going to look at liquidity. We're going to look at uh, sentiment. We're going to look at derivatives. We're going to look at many things as the cycle goes on to determine the timing component. So right now we're just kind of showing this is the end of 2025. This is where we would be. But that is dependent quite a bit uh, on yeah. when we peak is the point. Especially that when. I'm not in the camp that says, you know, everything is pro, pro, pre-programmed by God and by Satoshi and everything will exactly happen like the last cycle. I actually expect some deviation, right? Um, having is important, right? Because after having happened, uh, supply goes down. So it's important. But there are now other important factors like what ETFs do, what Wall Street does, what other micro strategy emerges. If a nation state announces that they're accumulating Bitcoin, I guarantee we will immediately get into the red zone and the uh, uh, and, and we reached at the top a lot faster, right? So I kind of the way I think about this is we need a huge catalyst. If there is no other catalyst, having will do its job because it's every day. It's like a new buyer in the market, right? Just sellers got less powerful. Um, so every day it's basically like some more additional buy pressure. But uh, in my opinion, the, the, you know, the explosive part of bull market starts as soon as some catalysts pushes the price high enough to bring in a lot of speculators. And when that happens, this is kind of like uh, 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 you put a spark in, in, in a tank of oil and then it, it, it begins a self-reinforcing cycle higher and higher until it exhausts the buy power in the market. And then, then it kind of comes back down to a more sustainable level. But uh, when this push happens, in my opinion, it's kind of anyone's guess, right? So we, we can get a sense of it, right? Just generally speaking, it uh, it's not going to be four years from now. It, it will happen sometime much sooner. But exactly when this happened, too many things affect this. Uh, so um, I don't think we can really model it exactly after the prior cycles, right? So that's why I'm like, you know, I wait for it to happen. And when it happens, we will know on our model, but we'll see the valuation. And we don't really need to kind of predict the exact time that this will happen. And uh, most people that try to predict kind of are essentially guessing. There's, there's no reliable way to do that.